Hi viewers, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to this YouTube channel Amir Academia and it's Hamza Amir. My today's video is related with the Pakistan Studies P2 Geography and the unit that I have is the Climate of Pakistan which is the second unit of your geography. And in this video, I'm going to wind up this unit with the last topic that we have. And before we start, let's figure out what our today's topic is. Well viewers, here we have the topic right there on the screen that is floods. So let's see that what we are going to discuss about the floods right now. The first thing we have over here is the causes of floods. So we are going to discuss about the causes that why the floods are getting generated in Pakistan. So the first thing we have over here is the natural cause just because of which the floods are generated. The first example in the natural cause is the melting of snow. Now we know that the highland areas of Pakistan, the northern areas of Pakistan, there are many areas which are throughout covered with the snow in winters. So when there is a summers, just because of those summers, the snow mainly melt, those glaciers they melt. So that is the very first cause we have, a natural cause, which mainly create floods. The number two we have over here is the heavy monsoon rainfall. Now as we have seen in our previous video of climate as well that there are certain areas from where the monsoon mainly generates in Pakistan that is Arabian Sea from the south and on the other side we have a Bay of Bengal from where the wind moves towards the northern India then it enters into Pakistan from the northern side and reaches to the upper Punjab. So just because of those monsoon rainfall, because they are the heavier rainfall, they comes into Pakistan and become the reason of the floods as well. These two are mainly the natural causes of floods. Another one we have over here is the human factors behind the uh, cause of those floods or to generate those floods. The first activity by the human is the deforestation. So when we talk about the deforestation, it means obviously the cutting of those uh, plants or trees or vegetation. So over here, when humans, they cut the deforestation and as we know that trees are the one which mainly act as a barrier in the situation of floods. So when there would be no tree or no plantation over there, there would be no safety or security when the flood would come. So eventually what would happen just because of that deforestation or the absence of trees, the surface runoff would be faster as compared to those areas where, uh, where they have the plantation of trees. So eventually the humans, are, uh, they are mainly taking part into that as well just because of the deforestation and creating a faster surface runoff as you could see in the picture as well which would create more damage. Another one we have over here is the weak embankments. So when we talk about the weak embankments, it, it means that these are the surrounding areas of those rivers from where the water flow. So when you have a weak embankment, obviously those areas would be eroded by the river and eventually the water would come, to, come onto the surface. So this is something which is another factor by humans. If they would not create a strong embankment over there, eventually they would get affected and it would create or create a chance to uh, create a flood over there in that area. The next one we have over here is the dam failure. Now here you could see the three pictures over here. That is picture number one in which you could see that the flow of uh, water into the dam which is proper. And when we talk about the dam failure, it means that the dam is not properly being maintained by the humans or is there any kind of a fault over there in the dam just because of which a breakage gets created. So in this picture here, you could see that a damage which has been created or a failure in the dam. That is the second picture we have over here. So just because of that failure or damage, just because it has not been maintained properly, the flood kind of a situation would generate because that dam water would divert it and move or change the path and comes out of it and eventually affect the areas in the surrounding. So these are the factors that we have, the natural one and the human factor, which are mainly the reasons behind the causes of floods. Well, the next one we have over here is the effects of floods. We know that obviously when the floods would get generated, they would create certain kind of effects 
on people on the land area or on the environment so let's see that what points we have over here the number one we have over here is farmers that the farmers are the one which get affected by the floods how the first point over here is the water logging and salinity now this is something which is a problem that is being created by the flood for the farmers how for that you people need to understand first of all that what exactly water logging and salinity is all about so for that let me take you towards a blank screen to explain the concept of the water logging and then salinity so when we talk about water logging this is something which is related with the underground water let me make a diagram so that you are able to understand that properly here i'm talking about the underground water whenever there would be any kind of a rainfall or either the melting of glaciers as we have discussed in the causes of floods whatever the reason behind the floods one once the floods would be there the water would come onto the land surface and the seepage of that water would be there which would eventually do what which would increase the water level and the water would eventually reach towards the land surface now this is a seepage and that process is called as infiltration means the seepage of water underground whenever the water would come it would seep into the ground and that water level would start rising and eventually reach towards the land surface that water over here would become stagnant means stand there and this would eventually create the water logging means the water would be logged over there and that process is called as water logging so what is the problem problem is that just because of that water logged over there the roots under that would not be able to breathe properly because they would not get any kind of air because of that stagnant water that is water logging second one we have over here is the salinity the second point so when we talk about salinity this is something which is related with the salt content underground means for example if we have that underground water that underground water would be either salty or sweet so if that water is saline means salty that salt content would eventually come onto the land surface with the water as well as we have seen in the water logging over here so as it has a salt content over here later on when the water would get evaporated so what would left behind the salt patches would left behind just because of which the fertility of the land would get affected so that is called as salinity coming back towards my point again as i said just because of this problem of water logging and salinity as i said in the diagram the fertility of the land will get affected another one is the crop destruction obviously when the flood would come and it does not have any kind of a protection over there towards the land areas where there is a crop which is being grown by the farmer it would create a destruction over there as well next is a loss of food obviously when the crop would get destructive and the fertility would be lost eventually what kind of a damage which has been created the loss of food because they would not be able to grow further crop over there or the crop which has been grown over there is being damaged properly by the flood so this is the problem that the farmers that they had to face next one we have is the residents means the people who are living over there and they have their settlements over there as well so what problems they would face number one cut off from services obviously when there would be flood over there the communication or the connection or the connectivity of the roads that would be damaged so somehow they would be cut off totally from the services they would not be able to go out to their jobs or any other places where they want to go the next one we have over here is the mud houses and huts now these are the one because they are not strong enough they would get damaged more as compared to those areas which are mainly are resistant towards flood but those mud houses as they have less resistance or the huts they have less resistance they would not be survive in the situation of flood over there so eventually those people who are living in such houses would get more damages 
The third one we have is the water borne diseases. As I said in the water logging, the water gets stagnant over there. So this, that stagnant water eventually would get polluted and the water borne diseases would get created for the people who are living over there in certain kind of settlements or in those areas where there would be flood and a flood comes. It would eventually lead it towards those diseases and one of them is the water borne diseases. Another damage or effect would be created towards the transportation, how the roads and railways. So there's only one point over here, as I said that when there would be flood comes, so there are certain kind of effects can be created. As we have seen in the previous videos as well, one of them was mainly related with the land slides. So obviously when there would be flood over there and there's no, deforest there's no forestation over there, just because of that deforestation, there will be more surface runoff. So the roads would eventually get blocked by that landslides as well. Even the railways are the one which would be affected and eventually the transportation system would get affected by those floods. Well, the next one we have over here is the preventive measures, means the precautions that we can create to reduce the impact of floods. We cannot stop the floods completely, but we can create certain measures out of which we can create the less or we can reduce the impact of those floods. So let's see that what measures we have. Number one we have is the afforestation on foothills. When we talk about afforestation, it means that we are talking about the plantation of trees on the foothills of the mountains so for example if we have a mountainous area over here and uh, which generates flood because of the melting of glacier or either a rainfall comes and generate the flood which are the causes as we have seen previously so if we would create any kind of afforestation on the foothills of those mountains on that area as we know that these trees are the one which mainly act as a barrier in front of floods so definitely these would be the one which would re uh, reduce the speed or the flow of that water and it would create a less impact number two we have over here is the strong embankments as we have seen in the previous slides the weak embankments which is the reason behind the impact of those floods so if we need to remove or to uh, reduce the impact of that flood we need to create some strong kind of embankment so that the river water does not erode that area or come to the land surface to create more damage. The third one we have is the diversion. Now this is something which is related with the flood diversion. Another thing that we can do is that we can provide a different channel to that flood and take it away from those settlement areas where it might move towards and create a damage. For example, if it is coming towards one land area over here, at point A so we can divert that flood towards other direction so that this area might get secured from it that is another precaution another one we have is let me clear that the building reservoirs now reservoirs means two things over here one is either dams or barrages now these two can be created to store the water whenever the flood comes so another preventive measure is to create those reservoirs either dams or bar barrages to reduce the impact of those floods next is flood warnings that the purpose which is being created by the government that what they can do is they can use certain kind of medium to provide certain warnings to the people that such kind of a situation is going to get created in upcoming days so what they should do is that they could create certain measures to secure themselves for the upcoming disaster next we have is the relief teams now these relief teams are mainly being planned in such kind of situation when there would be any kind of a disaster of floods which has been created over there, not only about floods, but the relief teams are certain there for certain natural kind of hazards, it might be an earthquake as well. So these relief teams can be created so that when there would be any kind of a natural hazard comes, for example, a flood comes, they would be the one who would react quickly over there as a secure team to provide security to the people over there. So these are the certain measures that we can create to reduce the impacts of those floods. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the last one we have over here are the benefits of floods. Yes, they have certain benefits as well. Let's see that what we have. Number one we have are the nutrients. Uh, another one is the alluvium means which is somehow related with the fertility. Well, I've mentioned these two only right now. Why? Let me tell you that whenever the flood comes, they bring certain kind of sediments with them and they do what? They mainly deposit those sediments over there. Now when we talk about floods, they are somehow very much beneficial for the agricultural purpose. Why? Because when we talk about the agriculture, it required either the irrigation and it also required soil, it also required certain nutrients as well so that we could have the fertility. So the floods are the one which bring certain kind of nutrients to the soil. For example, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, these kind of nutrients are being brought by the floods. Secondly, alluvium means the soil. Now this is something again which is being brought and deposited by the floods. Anywhere where you have a barren kind of a land or the uh, alluvium which has been brought by the floods over there so eventually that land area would become later on cultivated as well which would eventually increase the fertility of that land area. The next one we have over here is that the floods are the one which allow rivers to overflow. Now this is something which is important the overflow of those rivers. Why? Because whenever you have an overflow of a river at one place, the prevention would be created of, uh, automatically towards the downstream means the less kind of damage would, would be created downstream because the water would not be able to reach straight away towards that downstream area where mostly you people have your agriculture or your land settlements or the residential areas. So mainly when the flood comes just because of the extension of the volume into the river, it overflow and it comes out onto that surface and a less damage is being created downstream. Next one we have is food, uh, the fish production. Yes, when we talk about the fish production, we are mainly talking about the coastal areas. For example, this is your land area and that is your coastal area. So whenever a flood comes, it mainly bring a fresh water towards the coastal area, mainly which is the breeding grounds for the fishes. So just because of those floods, these fishes over there or that coastal area mainly gets a fresh water and that land area is very much productive regarding fishes. The next one we have is groundwater. As we discussed previously in the water logging and salinity, now we know that there are certain other kind of channels as well or other kind of water schemes I'm talking about which are mainly useful for the irrigation purpose as well. We have discussed these schemes in our previous videos as well. Now which schemes I'm talking about? For example, Kares. Now Kares is something which is an underground water channel through which irrigation can be provided to the land surface. So whenever the flood comes and the process of infiltration means the seepage would occur, the underground water level would rise and that underground water level can be later on utilized in the form of curries. Another one, another water scheme would be the tube wells. So the tube wells are also used for the irrigation purpose and we know that it is somehow interlinked with the groundwater as well. So just because of the floods, the underground water level mainly rises which mainly help these water schemes to provide irrigation as well. So this is it with the uh, today's topic. If you think that this video was beneficial, please kindly don't forget to mention that in the comment box. And please don't forget to subscribe the channel or to watch the videos. I'll be inshallah coming with the next video once again soon. So until then, take care of yourself. Khuda Hafiz.